All right, awesome. So let's get started. So tonight we are talking about being your own boss. How to become a boss with your beach body business. So of course, if you don't know my story, let me beat you with it. Um, I am your star diamond upline. I originally sucked when I first started as a coach. I eventually became a discount coach until I saw the real potential in coaching. Now as a five star diamond elite coach, I'm sharing my best practices that have helped me to have success by helping others succeed. So, you know, when I started over four and a half years ago, I started with the intention of, you know, hey, I'm going to help people. I'm going to make some money and I want to get skinny. In the meantime, I didn't work on doing personal development. I didn't practice the three vital behaviors. I never hopped on team calls. And so whenever I did try to reach out to people or, you know, try to help people, I just basically ver verbally vomited all over people. I not only verbally vomited on them, but I came off as a greasy salesperson. And so it was no surprise then that I absolutely sucked my first year to year and a half as a coach. Matter of fact, here is a breakdown of my commissions from when I first started. This is only just a little preview of, you know, the first, what, um, seven months as a coach. But here you can see I made absolutely no money whatsoever as a coach. I didn't help a single soul. I didn't sign up anybody to become a coach. I didn't sign up any clients. Nothing, nada. So I don't want to hear excuses. I don't want to hear people saying, well, you know, I've, I've only helped one person or whatever, because I'm telling you what, I've been doing this for four and a half years, and the level of success that I have today is totally possible. It's totally possible for you if you have been a coach for three months and you still have yet to make a sale to help one person hold on tight because I was sticking around with it a year and a half in and I didn't help a single soul. So what happened with me? What finally changed? Well, what I ended up doing was I saw other coaches having success with this. I saw that coaches were going and they were working on their skills that they were going to personal development. They were going to things like Danny Johnson and all kinds of different motivational speakers and gurus and all that fun stuff. And I saw their success and I thought, you know what, I want a piece of that too. So eventually what I did was I started looking at what the successful people were doing because as they say, you know, success leaves clues. I checked out what they were doing and I started to try and model my behavior off from them. And certainly once I finally got my act together and started putting the pedal to the metal, I did not just all of a sudden, you know, have success overnight. By any means, you know, a lot of my, a lot of the times my paycheck will look like, you know, $30 here, the next week, $0, the next week after that, maybe 60. And it was very inconsistent. But the more I was consistent with the three vital behaviors, the more it paid off. So as long as you are here, as long as you are being consistent, as long as you serve to share your story daily, and you serve to help the people that you truly want to help, you can totally have success with this. And I want you to know too, if you've signed up and you know you are a week into this, a month into this, three months into this, and you've already helped people, you can already say that you've achieved far more than what I achieved within my first year to year and a half as coaching. Um, imagine where you're going to be four and a half years into this. Just try to wrap your mind around that. Um, the level of success that I've had today, if you have already surpassed me time-wise, if you consider where you are at and where I was at at the same time, just imagine what you can have said for yourself four and a half years into this with consistency. I hope that gives you warm, fuzzy feelings inside that just freaking makes you want to just shout from the rooftops how excited you are about your future because you truly have something to be excited about. So as a coach, whether you are a brand new coach or a seasoned coach, these are the things that we're going to be going through today um, on this call. So, you know, what is your why? Your goals are goals for your business. When should you start sharing the three vital behaviors and your resources, our team Facebook group, what inviting looks like, how being proof the product works, works, 
personal development, script use. All I know is going for no, pumping that well, practicing consistency, where to place your focus, tasks to complete every day, and how to be solution oriented. So what is your why? Your why should make you cry like an emotional little baby. Dig deep. Go beyond the superficial here. So when you think about your why, it should not be like, oh, well, you know, if I help two people, that'll be cool. No. No, 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 no. You have a reason why you're doing this. It's got to be something deep. Like whether it is helping your parents pay off their debt, whether it is paying off your own debt, whether it's paying it forward to enough people so that one day you can retire, so that you can travel the world doing missionary work like what I want to do, you know, dig deep here. Um, my why, my purpose for doing Beachbody was, is, you know, I, I made it so that I didn't have a plan B. I dropped out of college because I wanted to pursue Beachbody. Kevin really wasn't supportive. He was kind of like, I don't know about that, but he still gave me the A-OK. -okay. Um, my parents, hell, my parents still, I've never actually told my parents I dropped out of college. Um, I'm sure they've caught on by now. But, you know, what I'm saying here is, is you need to understand your why. When you are having a tough moment, when you are just like, I don't know if I can make it another day as a coach, you need to revisit what your why is. My why is so I have freedom. I have freedom. I have flexibility. I know that when I was sitting in my classes, in the back of the class, working on Beachbody while I was pursuing a bachelor's degree in environmental science, I had no rhyme or reason for sitting in that class. I was not passionate about learning anything about soil composition and the rise in tides or rise and fall of tides or anything like that. What my heart was set on was living a life by design, having freedom over my time, having freedom over my schedule. So anytime that I'm feeling doubt, and yeah, I have doubt still occasionally, you know, that's, that's just always going to be something that's going to come with the territory no matter what you do. When I do have that doubt, I revisit why I'm doing this. Oh yeah, sure. Maybe I could quit being a beach body coach right now, but am I going to want to start working in nine to five where I'm going to have to put in 40 years of my life working towards somebody else's dreams? The answer to that is hell no. That is not anything I want to do. So I continue to push it with my business. I continue to go and climb over the obstacles so that I can make this work because I want to be free. I want to be my own boss. So what's your vision? What's your reason for doing this? Create a vision board. Write it down. Make it something visual. Make it something tangible. Make it something that you can feel. As a coach, you need to always remember and have a strong why so that it's propelling you forward. Our goals for your business. You absolutely hands down without a doubt, need to be hitting Success Club 5 every month. That is non-negotiable. And if you think about it like this, that is just helping three people each month. That's less than one person each week if you think about it that way. So hitting Success Club is super simple when you think about it. You, all you need to do is help three people, getting them on board with a fitness program and a 30-day supply of Shakeology bundled together in a challenge package, which runs about $140. Now, let's say, for instance, you want to help those three people at the very least. So what I recommend doing is reaching out to 30 people in a month. That number can seem daunting, but dude, if you want a successful business with this, by all means, I would hope that you'd want to help at least three people, at the very least. So if you're looking to help three people, you need to be reaching out to 30 people a month. Because if you have, let's say, a closing ratio or rate of 10%, then that means if you're reaching out to 30, you're at least getting three people on board. And if you use the scripts, which we're going to talk about later on in this presentation, there's no reason why you cannot lock that in with consistency and using the scripts. 
And why do you even want to hit Success Club? Well, I mean, there's awesome perks to it. So of course, you can get leads for hitting Success Club. So Beachbody is going to give you leads, and those leads could buy just infinite amount of product that you are going to get commission for. And thus, you know, you can help those people. Those are free clients given to you by Beachbody. Another thing is, for every month that you hit Success Club, Beachbody is going to award you with something. So they could award you with, you know, wear and shares, like Beachbody clothing. They could send you a book. They could send you the opportunity to, you know, do something that other people couldn't have done because they didn't hit Success Club. Another thing is, is you win trips. So if you hit Success Club within your first three months as a coach, Beachbody is going to give you a ticket to the Beachbody Summit. And the Beachbody Summit, I cannot talk enough about how freaking cool it is to go to this, but it is just a crazy event where you're surrounded by like-minded people, people who get you, people who get fitness, people who understand that life is a lot better outside of your comfort zone. People who serve a higher purpose of helping other people achieve the lives that they deserve to live. So yeah, you get to go to success or this um, Beachbody Summit by hitting Success Club your first three months as a coach. But then not only that, but you know, if you hit Success Club, let's say from January 1st all the way to December 31st, that entire year, if you do that, you pretty much have won a free vacation. So um, if you look, you know, this photo of my boyfriend and I, Kevin, with uh, Tony Horton, this was on the Success Club cruise last year, um, which went to Grand Cayman Island in Cozumel, Mexico. We both got to go on that trip for free because I hit Success Club the previous year, the first, you know, every month out of the year, I hit Success Club by just helping at least three people each month. Then, you know, this year, Kevin and I, we are going to Cancun for totally free as well. And then, of course, we plan on going on the Oasis of the Seas, um, which is the next, or which is 2016 Success Club trip. And without a doubt, I know I'm going to earn that for free. So there's so many reasons why you should want to hit Success Club. Success Club, you know, it gives you stability in your business. It gives you something easy to obtain and to work for. And then not only that, but dude, all of the cool prizes and different things that you get to earn through hitting Success Club, that makes it worth it in and of itself. Our second goal for you in your business is becoming an Emerald coach and building your team. So, you know, first off, when you sign up as a coach, you are an active coach. Your next goal is to become an Emerald coach, which means you get two people on board with you who say, you know what, I want to help other people deserve or live the life that they truly deserve, become the greatest versions of themselves. So, you know, sign up your best friend. Sign up your friend. Let them know, like, dude, I am doing this with or without you. I'm going to rock this, but it would be hella cool for you to join me and do this with me. Uh, you know, the train's leaving the station. I would absolutely love to have you on board because I want to rock this with you. Get your best friend on board. Then sign up your spouse or whoever it is you're dating or what, another really close BFF. Sign them up. Take them along on this journey with you. You may not necessarily know what you are doing right now, but the beauty in it is, is that you guys can learn together. And you also have an upline who is going to help you, who is going to train you to have success with this. So becoming an Emerald Coach is going to open up a lot of doors of opportunity for you and your business. You know, not only are you going to start getting Team Cycle bonuses, which is something that you can look up on your own, but you're also going to get leads from Beachbody as well. Then our other goal for your business is getting your products paid for. So we're going to want you on Shakeology every month because you know what? You need to build a belief in the Shakeology. I personally know that Shakeology has helped me to lose 20 pounds and keep that 20 pounds and 20 inches off this past four and a half years when normally before then my track record was I would lose 20 pounds and gain that same 20 pounds back instantaneously. And so for me, keeping that off 
has been beautiful. And one of the things that I contribute to that is not only Beachbody programs, but Shakeology as well. So helping three people each month, becoming an Emerald coach, and thus building your team, that's going to help you get your products paid for, and then it's just going to all compound from there. It's going to grow. So you won't just be breaking even, you know, by paying your Shakeology or buying your Shakeology and then getting people on board um, with challenge packages or with coaching, but you're also going to see that it's going to start compounding and it's going to start growing. And so, you know, you're not just making 120 a month, but you're making, you know, 120 a week. $500 a week and it just starts growing from there. So when should you start sharing? Well, the answer is now. If you wait until you know everything, you are going to miss out on valuable experiences. Not only that, but you're doing yourself and your friends and your family a huge disservice every day that you wait from sharing the opportunity with them. So imagine this, imagine you have an awesome friend who finds out about this awesome skincare line and you have acne <laughs> and let's just say she's using it, it freaking rules, it's totally busted up her acne, she has amazing clear skin and she just happens to sell it too. And imagine she's terrified to share it with you because she's afraid that you're going to think that she's a salesperson or she's trying to get you in on some pyramid scheme. And so your life, you've been going and rocking this acne on your face for two to three months after she's had a clear complexion and she's never shared it with you. I'm sorry, but dude, I'd be pretty freaking pissed <laughs> if my friend wasn't sharing that with me. So share this. Believe in this. Build a belief in this. And if you don't have a belief in it, you need to develop the belief in yourself and you need to develop the belief in the product by using it consistently. I'm four and a half years into coaching and I'm still learning. So imagine where I'd be, or you guys, for instance, if I would have kept postponing helping people and sharing this opportunity with people. For every day that I would have postponed sharing this, inviting people, you know, that's one more day where I wouldn't have added somebody to my team, or I wouldn't have helped somebody, or I wouldn't have gotten a referral from somebody. So every day that you aren't inviting, every day that you aren't sharing your story, that's one more day where you are just tossing a cool opportunity out the window. So share right now. Share where you are. Imagine if you went and you saw a freaking awesome movie and you wanted to tell your friends about it, but you were kind of hesitant. Would you wait until your friends asked you to recommend an awesome movie you loved before you shared with them the newest, greatest movie that Brad Pitt was in? I would probably guess you wouldn't. Um, would you feel like you needed to know everything about the movie before you brought it up to your friends? So would you feel like before you told your friends the awesome new movie that you just saw with Brad Pitt in it, would you have to know who the supporting cast was, who the director was, who filmed it, the filming location, the flavors of the, I mean, you know, you know, you do not need to know the ins and outs of Shakeology. You do not need to know the ins and outs of the program before you start sharing. Um, and are you offended if you do refer a movie to your friends and they don't want to see it? Chances are, no, it's just like, okay, well, fine. <laughs> Screw you, don't watch it. <laughs> You're going to miss out on, on an awesome movie. So don't be afraid to share um, because, yeah, people are going to say yes and people are going to say no. And when the people say yes, it's going to feel awesome when they actually do say yes. And it's going to make every no that you've gone through totally worth it. And also, think about it this way. You go to see a movie and you totally bypass and walk right past the concession stands and the popcorn booth. Do you think the person working behind the concession stands or the popcorn booth is offended if you don't want to buy their popcorn? Or if you ex ex bleh, actually sneak in popcorn or your own treats? No, they're not offended. They let it roll off their back. 
So that's essentially what you need to do. You need to let things roll off your back. You need to look at each opportunity to share as just one more opportunity to plant a seed with people and not get offended and do not take it personally when people do not want to sign up and drink your Kool-Aid. So of course, we have three vile behaviors as a beach body coach. The first one is inviting, second one is being proof that the product works, and the third one is doing personal development. So what I wanna let you know though, is, is as a beach body coach, no, you are the CEO of your own business. You have the right to build your business as you want to. And all I'm doing is I'm simply sharing with you the best practices for building your business. So, you know, you can take what I suggest and you can run with it, or you can take it and do what you will, chew up some stuff, spit out some. It's all essentially up to you, but I'm just sharing with you what's worked for me. But as your CEO of your own business, my goal is to help you to become independent of me, help you to become independent of whoever your upline is. Because you know what, at the end of the day, when you have success with this, this success that you have is strictly based upon what you did. It's not because I helped you, it's not because your upline helped you. We're providing to you the tips that have worked for us. We're passing that down to you, but we're passing down the same information to people who are, are unsuccessful as well. The only difference between the unsuccessful and the successful are the successful, you know, continually were consistent. They understood that they owned their own business and they didn't ride on the coattails of the person who hired them in. So what I'm saying is, is our goal is essentially to help you to become independent as quickly as possible. You know, if you teach a man to fish, he'll, he'll fish forever. But, you know, if you freaking just, you know, fish for him, how often, you know, he's going to rely on you his entire life. So we're looking to build leaders, leaders who are proactive, leaders who do not just rely and message their coach all the time when they have questions. You know, I'm not saying don't message me, don't message your upline, but dude, take the initiative of your business. Go to your coach online office and go down to the FAQs or go to this website right here um, typed out for you. And you can type in any subject. You could type in Shakeology. You could type in Success Club Cruise. You could type in Team Cycle Bonuses. And information will pop up for you right then and there. And by all means, too, please Google it. Um, you know, Beachbody information isn't kept under lock and key. Anything that you want to know about Beachbody can be Googled. You can find information that is located in the FAQs, the back office. You can find Beachbody coaches who took all that information and posted it to their blogs. You can find it all on Google. So please, you know, go to the Coach Online office, check out the FAQs, Google it, ask in our team Facebook group, call Coach Relations or hop on a live coach chat with coach relations, which can be done either from a computer or from your smartphone. And if you aren't satisfied with the answers that you found or you have a hard, hard time understanding it, please ask your sponsor coach or your star diamond upline. And by all means, if you are having difficulty, if you are having a hard time, don't let your upline be the last to know. Let them know that you need help. Let them know that you're having a hard time because we are here to help you. We are here to help walk you off a cliff, but we are looking for you to be independent. And by all means, once you start building a team of your own, you want your team to be independent too because, you know, you want them to be resourceful. You want to also have a life outside of Beachbody. Beachbody is about creating freedom so that you can do whatever you want whenever the heck you want to do it. But if you have a bunch of coaches who are codependent on you and always relying on you, having that freedom is very hard to obtain. 
Another thing we want you to do is we want you to stay connected. So reach out to your sponsor coach. You know, let them know. Like I said, don't ever let them be the last to know when you are struggling. Check out the Coach Online office for news and updates. Tune in to the National Wake Up Call every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And by all means, please check out our team calls at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And they, they are always recorded as well. And join in on the fun in our team Facebook group. And here's some information about our team Facebook group. So there are plenty of resources here. So if you check out our team Facebook group and go to the file section, that's where you're going to find a plethora of just incredible resources for building your business. You're going to find scripts back there. You are going to find templates of how to run your own free seven-day clean eating group. You're going to find all kinds of amazing resources back there. So please check that out. Another thing as well is, is, you know, you are going to get a lot of notifications thanks to this group. So if you see um, right above where it says add to favorites, there's also a little area that says notifications. If you check mark that and turn that off, that is totally cool. I'm not going to be offended. But what I do recommend that you do is, is you make it a habit to check our Facebook group at least once a day and probably once a day at the very end of the day. That way you can follow up, you can see what's going on, you can stay on top of it, you can be the CEO of your business and check out all of the news and what's happening. Also, you can add our group to your favorite section, which is going to make locating this group in all of the crazy Facebook fury and all the confusion that we have on Facebook a lot easier. So if you go to those three little buttons there, click on that, scroll down to where it says add to favorites. What then is going to happen is, is our team group is going to pop up on the left side over there. And that's just going to make locating the group a lot easier. I cannot stress enough too, if you are a new coach or even a coach who has been on the team for a while but you do not have friends on the team, if you are only maybe friends with two people who are coaches on this team, shame on you. <laughs> Become friends with the people on our team. Learn them, meet them, it, you know, network with them, learn from them. Like I said, success leaves clues. So add them as friends, see what they're posting to their Facebook, learn from them, you know, see their posts and try to mock it in your own personal way. Don't full out just copy somebody, but check out their content and tailor make it to what it is that you're trying to get out there and, and just be genuine to yourself but look and see what the other coaches are doing and, and make it your own and not only that but also you know team up find somebody to be an accountability partner with somebody that's going to hold you to your success somebody who is kind of similar to you somebody who maybe has the same goals and aspirations and why as you do and be friends with them you know talk to each other weekly exchange phone numbers but network you know this community is an incredible community uh it's no joke when jim Rohn said you are the five people that you surround yourself with uh, and so essentially, you know, you also attract like-minded people. So I would like to think that our team is a group of, you know, 500 plus on average women who are all goal-oriented, all positive, all working towards the same things with a lot of the most common characteristics possible. So you can find somebody within our team who you really click with, who you really mesh with. And the more you branch out, and reach out to other people from the team, the more that's going to hold your spot here. The more that's going to solidify the idea of, you know what, this is an awesome community, and at the very least, I would hate to lose this. So definitely reach out to the other coaches on our team. So invite, invite, invite. I don't want to completely hammer this into the ground, but I also do want to express the importance of inviting. So as a Beachbody coach, we serve to connect with people, you know, people you've lost contact with or anyone you feel maybe even right off the bat, if you're a new coach, 
who could be interested in fitness and health. Um, one of the people that I've been working with from corporate, he said, you know what, if you are um, a new coach, you should definitely be searching for the low hanging fruit, which basically means the fruit that is easy to pick, easy pickings. So if you have people that you know who are interested in health, interested in fitness, they're motivated to be better people. They're positive people, uplifting people. They're people into CrossFit. They're people who are into any kind of fitness platform or nutrition kind of way. Reach out to those people. Those people, you know, build connections with them. Um, if it's been a while since you've talked to somebody, let's say, you know, the last time you talked to them was in preschool. Compliment their flowers, which is something that one of my mentors, Kevin Jensen, taught me. Essentially what complimenting somebody's flowers means is, you know, you can do this either on Facebook or real life. So let's say, for instance, you walk up to a castle that has a drawbridge and a moat. You walk up to that castle and you scream up to the person who is manning that castle or the drawbridge and you say, let me in. Well, the person is probably going to be like, who the hell do you think you are? I'm not letting you in here. But if you walk up to that same castle, that drawbridge, and that person manning that drawbridge, and you say, dude, these flowers you have out here are absolutely beautiful. Did you plant these? The person manning that drawbridge is probably going to be like, well, actually, come on up. Let me tell you all about it. So if you are reaching out to somebody you haven't talked to in a while, compliment their flowers, look over their Facebook page, see if anything new, anything awesome, anything positive is going on in their life, and compliment their flowers on it. Hey, you know, I saw that you just had a child, you know, congratulations, you know, do you plan on having any others? Something like that, you know, compliment their flowers, get them to talk, but I guarantee that if you start up a conversation where you are engaging in a conversation, or you're engaging with a compliment, that person is going to be such, that much more inclined to respond back to you, and they're going to be more receptive to having a conversation after you, or with you. And so this is something I heard Janelle Summers say at our Super Saturday event just recently. She said, repeat after me, the more I say, the less I make. Say that until that is drilled into your head. Basically, what she's trying to get across with this is don't word vomit on people. Uh, the more you word vomit on people, the more you're making it about you. So ask people questions. Be inquisitive about their life. Remember, this isn't about you. This is about you finding out how you could serve somebody or if you can even serve somebody. So the best way to do that is ask them questions. Stop talking about yourself. You know, you have a spouse, you have best friends, you can talk to them about yourself all you want. But this is not the time or the place to do that. So ask people questions. And by all means, you know, if you are feeling that the conversation is kind of coming to a close or you feel like you're trying to pull teeth here, just wrap it up by saying, hey, you know, it was awesome to catch up with you. Don't be a stranger. That's all you have to do. You don't have to force anything. You don't have to make things feel incredibly awkward. Make this flow. Make this be effortless. Another thing, too, is so, you know, there's going to come a time in the conversation where the people you're talking to are going to ask you, you know, what is it you're up to? So I encourage you to know your audience. So based upon who it is you're talking to, you can respond with a number of things. So something you could say is, is I'm a health and fitness coach. You could also tell somebody, I'm an online health coach, and I also help people start their own online coaching business. Another thing you might be able to say back to them is, I talk to people on Facebook for a living. You might also say, I'm a stay-at-home dog mom. If you are one of our um, newest retirees, April McDonald, she can totally say that to people. Um, also, you could say, I talk to people on Facebook for a living so I can eventually be a stay-at-home dog mom or so I can eventually be a stay-at-home mom. So these are all things that you can say. And by all means, you know, don't just think that, oh, I'm going to say this and then somebody's going to jump all over what it is I have to say. 
It might not work out that way, and that's totally fine, but know that you are planting a seed. I guarantee, though, if you are talking to somebody who is just a chatty Kathy, you see them always posting on Facebook. They're always sharing stuff. They're always posting about fitness, nutrition. They're trying to inform people, or they're just all about Facebook. If you talk to them and said, I talk to Facebook, or I talk to people on Facebook for a living, so I can eventually be a stay-at-home dog mom. That person is going to want to know what the heck it is you're doing. So be totally a-okay with planting a seed and know that it could go somewhere or it might not, but it's okay. It's totally fine. So with being proof that the product works, you know, what we want you to do is Understand that posting on Facebook is something where you're looking to provide valuable content to the people that you click with. Um, with everything that you post, you should ask yourself, does this add value? And would my best friend want to share this? So you are looking to share uplifting stuff. You're looking to share positive stuff. You're looking to share something that your best friend would appreciate seeing. Um, you're looking to share stuff that is true to who you are. So if you are somebody who is all about animals, the environment, post about that stuff. Post about stuff that you feel passionate about, that you can easily talk about. But also know that you are not just, now that you're a Beachbody coach, you're not just supposed to spew Beachbody and vomit all over people. Matter of fact, if you look at my Instagram and my Facebook, you'll see that I barely ever bring up Beachbody. Like, Hardly ever, but I'm still successful at this, and that's because I post about things that are true to who I am. And likewise, the people who appreciate that stuff, they follow me. They understand. They appreciate what it is that I post. And so when I do eventually make a post about, you know, um, one of my challenge groups starting up or maybe the coaching opportunity, these people reach out to me because they see that I'm not just trying to spew beach body all over people and I'm not trying to pu push a product on people if I'm not living the lifestyle. For more information on how to post on Facebook or Instagram, definitely check out my YouTube video trainings for more. So with personal development, how can you help other people if you yourself aren't okay? Truly. Um, you know, when I became a coach, I didn't do any of the personal development. It wasn't until I was about a year and a half to two years in where I actually started working on becoming a better person. So how cool is this? You know, this is a job opportunity where two of the three vital behaviors require you to become a better person, you know, being proof of the product works and doing your personal development. So work on growing as an individual, work on growing as a human being and becoming a better version of yourself. If you want to help people, you need to put on your own life mask first. You know, breathe your own set of oxygen so that you can better help the people around you. You got to learn to love yourself and spread that love with others. If you don't ever truly dig down and conquer the demons, you know, your dark passenger who is riding along on this journey with you, if you don't conquer that, if you don't try to figure out how to squash that dead in its tracks, it's going to always be rearing its ugly head, trying to derail you from success, trying to stop you with fear, trying to have you focus on all of the negative things that, you know, friends, family, a complete stranger might be saying to you on Facebook or on Instagram. So learn to love yourself first and hone in on your skill sets. You know, we're a team of people who have never had previous leadership or business training, but, you know, to have success, we've had to chip away the dirt to reveal the pol polished individuals that we are. So work on becoming a polished individual. Work on building your skill set so you can become a better person and a better coach. And then everything else is going to fall into place because when you develop those skills, when you build that confidence, trust me, you can totally have success. And this is coming from somebody who was shy. This is coming from somebody who was bulimic. This is coming from somebody who hated to do personal or, you know, um, presentations in front of a class. And look where I am today. 
I'm not here because I just fell into this. I'm not here because I just one day woke up and I was like, hey, I'm ready to present. I'm ready to be a better person. It took me personal development day in and day out where I had to basically brainwash years of negativity out of my mind. So we've been brainwashed for what, 20 something years to be negative? You need to brainwash yourself on a daily basis to be a better person. And hey, you know, if you are somebody where you are busy as hell and you don't even know when you can wipe your own butt, you're that busy, please don't feel like you have to read personal development books. There's so many ways that you can get personal development audio. You can listen to YouTube. You can find audio books on YouTube. You can go to your library and listen to audio or buy audio tracks or whatever it might be. So there, if there's a will, there's a way. So if you cannot read your personal development, listen to your personal development. So do you script? Use our scripts. Uh, think about it. Wait staff customer service reps. All other professions have a script. So what makes you think we should be any different? Before I started using scripts, I word vomited all over people. I mean, dude, it would not be unlikely for me at one point in time to probably be so deep into a word vomit that I just totally got off on a different tangent and just came out with, hey, I have very high nipples. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't personally. I'm just talking about that meme there, but I'm saying, you know, like, dude, we have scripts to help take the pressure off from your shoulders where you feel like you have to be perfect. You do not have to be perfect, but trust in this that I have said a lot of the wrong things to people, and I've also said a lot of the right things to people. And so what I'm passing down to you guys are word for word the right things that I've said that have gotten me to where I am today. So, you know, you can take what I'm passing down to you and you can polish it up so that it sounds authentic and it sounds real to you. I mean, don't by all means just totally rewrite the scripts all together. Um, but, you know, tailor make it to you. Tailor make it to your own personality. You know, these scripts are simple tools that allow you to have success. These are tools that I use every day. I have the ultimate script for talking to people about, you know, um, Shakeology or a program, I have that saved to my phone as well as I have the ultimate coaching script as well. I have those saved to my phone. I resort to them. I've used them so much now though that it's pretty much, I can say it word for word and not have to resort back to the script files themselves. But you know, with practice, it just starts to become fluid. You know, Michael Jordan didn't get to where he was by not practicing. Michael Phelps didn't get to where he was by not practicing. Wait staff, they don't become fluent at helping people and having a successful experience with their clients who come in to see them without practicing, without using scripts. So do not let your ego get in the way here. Scripts are here for a purpose. Scripts are here so you can have success as well. So, you know, when you're talking to people, when you're using the scripts, you are going to come with, you're going to be, you know, flooded sometimes with objections, or you're going to be flooded with questions. People are going to want to know your own personal experience. This is another point in time where you're not going to want to vomit all over people. Um, you know, when people ask you about the coaching opportunity, for instance, you know, you may not have the success that I have. And that's totally fine. You're not four and a half years or you're not even two years into coaching. So if that's the case, tell them about where it is you are now and share your vision for where you're going. So if somebody asks you like, well, you know, what's coaching done for you or what's this fitness program done for you? Fill in the blank here. You know, I've lost 20 pounds and 20 inches. All I know is I feel better than ever. All I know is I was living to pick from paycheck to paycheck, and now I have breathing room. All I know is I love the community, being surrounded by like-minded people, and the friends I am making. If you want this, act like it. Believe in it. You know, don't go to a hardware store either and ask for a birthday cake. What do I mean by that? 
Well, you know, when you're talking to your friends, when you're talking to your family, there are going to be people who do not understand. There are not going, there are going to be people who do not get where you're going with this. They're going to think it's a pyramid scheme. You know, your aunt Mabel is going to think that you fell into some kind of trap and you know, you're, you're going to end up getting audited by the IRS or something freaking crazy like that. I mean, my dad still does not understand how taxes work. And he always tells me, I hope you're doing your taxes right. I'd hate to see you get audited. I'm like, dad, I got it covered. Um, but you know, do not expect to go to a hardware store and get a birthday cake from that hardware, hardware, ah, hardware store. So, you know, don't expect to go to somebody who's negative and expect to get positivity from them. Don't expect to have somebody pat you on the back when all of you know that's going to happen is they're just going to spout off venom at you. Um, so, you know, Share this opportunity with people who you feel deserve your time. If you have, without a doubt, you know that if you went and you talked to your cousin Jerry about this opportunity and he was just going to shut you down right off the bat, don't share with cousin Jerry. Don't feel obligated. But I can guarantee you that there are so many people who deserve to hear your story, who deserve to hear how you've lost weight, who deserve to hear the coaching opportunity and what it's done for you and where you're going with this. So share, you know, if you don't have the level of success yet that I have or that April McDonald or Corey Mayo or Brooks Burling or any of those coaches, Sherry Moore, if you don't have that level of success yet, share where you're going with this paint a vision for yourself and believe in it a hundred percent. Like I said earlier, let people know that the train is leaving the station. You know, um, what I recommend that you do is, is talk to the people who you think could become good coaches. Talk to your best friends, talk to positive people in your life, talk to the people who you surround yourself with on a daily basis and let them know that the train is leaving the station, that you don't need them to be successful at this, but it'd be awesome if they came along for the ride. Let them know that you'd love nothing more than to be on the stage with them at our big celebration event summit, shredding up your mortgages. But if that's not for them, that's okay. Just know that, you know, let them know that you are taking this and you're running with it and that you don't want them to look back in two years and be upset for you not sharing this opportunity with them. You know, know that this is an incredible opportunity and share that with them. Um, and have passion about this. Let people know that you are serious with where this is taking you and that no obstacle or hurdle is going to stand in your way from being successful. I guarantee if you have that mindset, your freedom, whether that's financial freedom, freedom over time, freedom over your schedule, freedom over your life, it's going to happen. You just need to have that belief in this. I also need you to understand that, you know, you need to go for no. Um, you're going to get a lot of no's. You're going to hear it. I mean, I still hear no's on a daily basis. I hear it quite often and it never quite gets old. Yeah, hearing no sucks. But you know what? When you finally do hear a yes, that's when all of the no's were totally worth it. When you finally have somebody who deserves your help tell you, yeah, this is a go, then it's, you know, it just makes all of that, all of the other people that you've had to plant seeds with, it's made it totally worth it. And understand too that, you know, this business is a business of farming. You know, you are planting seeds. You are sharing an opportunity with people and that, you know, a lot of times people have to see this opportunity a few times before they ever say anything, before they ever step up to the plate and commit to it. Understand though that with consistency, the people who are being exposed to you, the people who are seeing what you're doing daily on Instagram, on Facebook, they're going to come around. But the thing is, is <clears throat> people aren't going to join you if you are somebody who is on again, off again, on again, off again. If you are on for four months and then you're off for six, who would in the right mind want help from somebody who is that infrequent? Because they look at it as, dude, you give up on yourself. 
how can I ever trust you to totally have my back 100%? So if you want this business, you need to have consistency. You need to have the mindset that you need to make this a hundred or nothing because there is no middle ground. There is no gray matter here. And dude, being consistent is something that is really quite effortless when you think about it. You just need to make the decision that your why is important. Your why is what's going to propel you to have success with this. And understand that, you know, a lot of people think that success is just a straight journey of continual accomplishments, continual success. But the truth is, is I've had to fail my way to get to where I am. I fail on a daily basis. I say a lot of stupid stuff that turns people away. I do a lot of stupid stuff like cutting my hair midst um, a what is health and fitness coaching presentation when we have like 20 people on and they're all seeing me cut my hair. I fail a lot, guys, and I'm still where I am. And so understand that you can freaking cut your hair. You could freaking cut pick your nose in the middle of a presentation and it doesn't matter as long as you never give up. So pump that well. What does pumping your well mean? All right, so this is something from the compound effect. Pumping your well, imagine this, you walk up to this old fashioned well and you know that there's water lurking inside of this. So you go up to it and you pump it a couple of times and then nothing comes out. And you're like, screw this, F it, I'm walking off. And you just give up right from the get go. That's one type of person and that's the kind of person who will never see success with this. Then there's a second type of person. This second type of person, they walk up to it they start pumping the well, and a couple of drops comes out after, you know, 10 attempts at pumping. And the person who did that, they look at it and they say, that's it? That's all I have? And then they get dis discouraged and they walk off. And they toss their hands up in the air and they say, you know what, I worked my ass off. I talked to so many people and I only got two people to commit. Wham! And they walk off. And those are the people who don't deserve this. And then there's the ultimate beach body coach. There's a beach body coach who walks up to that well, they pump it 20 times, and they see a cascade of water come out. And then they just say, you know what, this is awesome, I'm not going to stop. And then they keep on going, and they keep on going. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that bucket laying there, it starts overflowing. That's what this is like. I'm to the point now where I freaking, I have so many people coming to to me for help that I don't have enough time in the day. <laughs> so, you know, there was also that point in time where I was like, man, I would just love to have five people who need my help. Now I have about 50 people who need my help that I need to respond back to on Facebook. So there's going to come a time and don't let that idea overwhelm you either because I can totally share with you my best practices for how to help people when you have mass amounts coming to you. So don't let that overwhelm you. But understand that with consistency, you are going to have people who are going to deserve your time and who are going to want your time. So be consistent and understand that this is not a get rich quick thing and this is not something that just happens overnight. So here are some of my tips for having success with this. When you're posting on social media, keep your posts on the short side. I recommend sharing your personal story once a week. So share your story and how Beachbody is helping you. So when I share my story and how Beachbody has helped me, I don't ever necessarily come out and just say, oh, P90X is a program that helped me to lose 20 pounds or 20 inches. I try to leave some kind of vagueness on the table, which causes people to reach out to me and say, hey, how did you lose that weight? And then I'm like, oh, well, what interests you in my help? Which is, you know, how you get started with the ultimate script. So leave some kind of vagueness on the table, which will have inquiring, inquisitive minds asking you for help. Talk about your passions. So write down five things that you thoroughly enjoy and talk about them. So let's say, for instance, one of your things is fitness. One of your things is 
uh, animals, one of your things is traveling. Those are just three things. So let's say every Monday you were talking about fitness, although you should talk about fitness by sharing what you're doing once a day um, with your fitness programs or with your Shakeology. But let's just say then, you know, every Tuesday you are talking about your pets and every Wednesday you are talking about traveling of some way, shape, or form. Make sure that your posts are eye-catching. You know, stop the scroll. So I don't always post photos with my, um, you know, my statuses because sometimes I don't feel a photo is appropriate. But when I do post a status, I don't just make it one continual long vomit post of just word after word after word vomit. I try to break up my posts. I try to add uh, paragraph breaks, emojis, different things that keep people interested in what it is that I have to say. But if I am uploading a photo, I'm going to make it a photo that catches somebody's eye. I'm going to make it something that is maybe controversial because I do like to push the envelope. I like to have people who have open minds see my posts and engage with me. So be sure that the things that you're posting are things that are true to you and things that are going to catch people off guard. You know, on social media, you have a small time frame in which you can catch people's attention when they're just scrolling mindlessly through their newsfeed. So you want to upload something that doesn't look like everything else. You want to upload photos and inspirational things that aren't just regurgitated time and time again. So make your stuff unique. Make it true to who you are. Ask something engaging of your audience. So a lot of times when I am posting on Facebook or Instagram, I'm posting something that is engaging. I'm asking somebody a question. Anytime that I post, I try to always post a question and then get into the meat and the potatoes of what it is that I'm trying to ask or what I'm trying to get across because that has people stop dead in their tracks. And most of the time, if you are posting something, like say for instance, the other day, I posted about, hey, you know, like I have four photos here and I need to submit one of these photos to my business. Which photo would you select? And I had over 300 people comment on that. So people like to engage. People like to help out. So make sure that your posts are something where you're getting engagement. You're finding a way to get interaction from the people following you. And like I said, make sure that, you know, 20% of what you post is about fitness and make sure the other 80% is about passionate stuff that you absolutely love. Look at your last five posts and truthfully answer this to me. Would you, if you were a complete stranger, would you follow you based on your last five posts? If you can say no to that, you need to change what it is that you're doing. If you're posting negativity or anything like that, you need a complete overhaul of what it is that you're doing on your Facebook. Also, be willing to change and adapt. You know, Facebook and Instagram, they're finicky. They like to keep things fresh. They like to keep people guessing. So you need to be able to roll and just go with it and change as everything social media-wise evolves. And also understand, too, that a mediocre post is better than no post at all. So don't feel like you just have to be totally awesome and on your A game all of the time. There's still times where I post and I'm like, hell yeah, this is going to be great. And I might get two people who like it. So understand that not everything you do is going to be just a ballpark home run grand slam, but just try to do your best. Try to do better than you would and you're going to have success with this. So you know, this all can sound really overwhelming, and it's easy to feel overwhelmed, but don't allow yourself to feel like that. Focus on one task at a time. So what I recommend doing, um, you know, we have a file about how to reverse engineer your goals, and if you go to the file section of our team page, you can locate that so that you can learn how to better focus on your time. But in the meantime, you know, when you sit down for the day, write out what your goals are. Write out what the three, four, five things are that you want to accomplish and just work on crossing one of those off each time that you are sitting there trying to refocus on your next task. Just think of what it is that you can do to cross that task off your list. 
also, please know, you know, I've had this conversation before. People are asking or telling me, I don't have time in the day to work my business or whatever. But understand that if you in the morning or whatever it is that you're going to the bathroom, if you end up with freaking you know, spots on your knees from where you rested your elbows while you were mindlessly scrolling through your Facebook or through your Instagram account, checking out all your social media stuff and mindlessly engaging in social media, you could have been spending that time investing in your business, reaching out to people, making connections with people. So there are no excuses to success with this. If you want success, you're going to find the ways and the time to make it happen. So here are tasks to complete every day. Compile a list and work off from it. So your list is essentially a list of all of the people that you could help. Go through your Facebook. Your Facebook is a list. Go through all the people that you are friends with. Go through all the people that are following you or that you are following on your Instagram account and write those people down. These are people that deserve your help. They deserve to hear your story, um, whether it be with the coaching opportunity or with the fitness side of things. And so every day, you know, if you are a new coach, this is what I want you to practice on this week. And subsequently, from there on. If you do not finish these tasks, you are not to build upon this. Because if you try to build upon a foundation that was unstable, you're not going to have success with this. So if this is your first week or your second week, if you're not consistent with this, hammer this down before you go on to anything else. So what you need to do is, is you need to build new relationships or connect with old friends three to five people each day. If you are looking to go boss mode with your business, then of the people that you've connected with in the past, so say you know you are five days into coaching, you need to go and revisit the people you talked to on your first day, and you need to invite one of those people or two of those people each day to a challenge group. Also, you need to be inviting, if you want to go absolutely boss mode on your business, you need to be inviting five people a week to the coaching opportunity. The second thing you need to do as a coach is you need to post once a day on Instagram and twice a day on Facebook. So allow the one post that you use on Instagram to kill two birds with one stone and use that on your Facebook as well. Another thing that you need to do is you need to do your personal development. So 10 minutes at the very least. Whether you are successful in doing these three tasks will largely determine where your mentorship and where your business goes. If you have a weak foundation, like I mentioned, your business will crumble. So in wrapping up this training, what I want to focus on is our team is focused on integrity, positivity, and helping others to become the best versions of themselves. So I invite you in joining us in being solution-oriented. Stop complaining. Stop looking at your life as a victim. Be the hero of your life. You know, stop looking at, could this day be any worse? And I challenge you to look at your life with a grateful eye, with a thankful eye, and see how fortunate you are. And anytime you are, given some kind of problem, some kind of obstacle or hurdle, look at the solution. And so don't complain. You know, I only want positive people on our team. So understand that what you focus on expands. If you're always focusing on the negative, essentially all you're ever going to see in your life is negativity. But if you focus on positive things, that's what you're going to see more of. So if you want positivity with your business, with your life, Make it your goal to focus on that. Think about the future team that you want to create. You are a leader. Always hone in on that skill. So if you want a team of negative Nancys, well, by all means, rock on with your negative self because that's all you're going to attract to your business. But if you want to have a positive team of goal-oriented, driven, integrity-based, positive people who are all helping others to become the greatest versions of themselves, then you need to focus on building your personal development to become that kind of person. So what I want to do then 
is, is I want to take any kind of questions then that we might have. I'm going to go ahead and unmute this. I know that we went over majorly on our time, but I appreciate every single one of you for staying.